Okay, this sermon's entitled, The Renewing of, of Your Mind. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing us to have your word, and allowing us to, um, to cleanse our mind with your word. Keep it safe, and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, I know sometimes, you know, whenever I preach, you know, I become um, bad logistic. That is, uh, I just repeat the same things over and over again. It's kind of a perfunctory prayer, I, I realize that. But the thing is, you know, the Bible puts a lot of emphasis on uh, renewing the mind, and it puts a lot of emphasis on, you know, quoting verses and memorizing verses. Now, if you start quoting a lot of verses and, and reading a lot of verses, it, it, it basically clears your mind up. You know, you have, the mind is a very fragile thing. It's very frangible, and it's very susceptible to, uh, to the things of this world, the, the evil forces and uh, evil imagery, you know, craven, you know, imagery and... and um, and not not just graven, but craven. Craven is like you know cowardly. Graven is of course dark, you know, wicked, occultic, and our, we, that's why we need to be very very sensitive to what we allow our mind to be um, subject to. So reading the Bible, like I said, ta tautologically or battle logistically, which means to just repeat over and over again. These are some new, some fancier words, but nonetheless, this is what we need to do. We need to get into God's Word, and we need to like repeat it. Over and over again. That's how you memorize God's word. Is just repeating it over and over again. You start quoting the verse. And uh, so I'd like to open up with, um, you know, some Bible verses on this subject, and then I'm gonna, you know, go straight into um, what the Bible talks about it on in regards to this. So let's op let's go ahead and open up to uh, Isaiah 55. Let's just let's just go over a few verses here, and um, just ra at random. Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye. Buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which, is, which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. This is a similitude for salvation. This is a picture of it. You know, look, look unto me and be ye saved, the same, prom, same premise. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Let's stop right there. Now, the concept of, of grace, the concept of salvation being a free gift is found all the way, is found in these verses. It's very important that we continue to renew our minds with this, with this, with this concept, with this, with this biblical fact. Because I'm going to tell you right now, people get in, into false doctrine. They go to a church where they're teaching out of the wrong Bible, teaching the wrong plan of salvation, and they listen to that stuff every single week, week after week after week after week after week, ad infinitum. They're eventually, this, the, the lies are going to sink in. That's what you call inculcation. You know, you're hearing something over and over and over and over again, and eventually you just believe it. Because you, you don't know any, you, it's, that's what you've been taught your whole life. I remember talking to this guy, he, 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 he was coming up with all sorts of garbage about if you committed suicide, you would go to hell. It's, if you were saved, it's stupid. No, you can't go to hell if you're saved. It doesn't matter what you do if you're saved, you can't go to hell. You won't go to hell. Because there is no condemnation, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. This guy believed that. He's, he, he was telling these old ladies, if, if you committed suicide, that was it. You're going to hell. I said, no, the Bible says... You know, and I, I, quoted, I quoted a bunch of verses. And I took the guy aside. I said, look, we're passing out tracts together, and you're, you're telling people this crud? And I, got all, I went off on him. I said, he said, whoa, I just, he said, don't blame me. It's what I've been taught my whole life. I said, well, you've been taught wrong. You need, to, you need to erase that from your mind. You need to expunge those teachings. Get rid of them. Wipe, wipe them out. You know, obliterate them from your, th your thinking because it's, it's false. It's lies. And that's what we need to do. We need to constantly go over the clarity of Scripture. You know, the, 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 uh, the wonderful doctrine of, of salvation by grace. And that's why I wanted to go over these verses. Because it lets you know that, hey, anyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. The waters represents eternal life. Okay? And then it says, and he that hath no money. And it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. And hey, it cost Jesus Christ everything. He died on the cross. He took your pain and your, your sufferance and your punishment he paid for it, and he, all your sins were paid for by his death, burial, and resurrection. And so we need to constantly remind ourselves of that. That's called grace orientation, or the faith rest drill. I mean, there's a slight difference between the two. But see, we need to remind ourselves of this wonderful truth, and that, that's part of how you renew your mind. 
Now, just think about it. I mean, look, if you're grounded in the truth and the Holy Spirit's inside you, you're saved, you, you know, you're a born-again believer, the Holy Spirit's not going to really allow you to fall for that stuff. But, hey, the devil will still try. So that's why it definitely helps to get into the Word and renew your mind. So let's just go over some of the basic verses on this subject. And I, it's really very important. You know, I, I've been going to a, this church I go to. Um, there are people in there that are mixed up. They don't really understand grace, salvation. And I'm thinking, something's not right here. What what's the problem with these people? Why don't they understand this? Here's the the, the thing. Here's the, here's the issue. I think I think they're not reading the Bible. They're not going home, making sure that what they're being taught is true. Now I'm not saying that the 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 the, the preacher is teaching them false. No, the preacher's not teaching false. But still, Satan has a way to blind people from the truth. Now it may it may mean that they need to be saved. If they if they're just not saved, they need to understand that salvation is a free gift. It's simply believe on Jesus Christ for the free gift of eternal life. You know, understand that he died, paid it all. He, it was already paid for before you were even born. It was paid for 2,000 years ago at the cross. It's done. You can't add anything to it. You can't take anything from it. It's a free gift. You either, either, either have the gift or you don't. And it's by faith alone. It's not faith plus works. It's not faith plus repenting of sins. It's not faith plus baptism. It's not faith plus church attendance. It's faith alone. In Christ alone. And that's what the Bible teaches. And they need to understand this. And see, the thing is, if you're not if you're not going to renew your mind, the devil's going to get in your head and then start telling you all sorts of nonsense. So turn over to Romans chapter 12. There's three verses I want to look at now. Romans chapter 12 is the main one. And then there's another one in Ephesians, and then there's another one in Colossians. But let's take a look at Romans chapter 12. It, it tells us to do this, and I'm encouraging us to do this as well. Romans 12. Now, if you re people would renew their mind, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be their minds would not be so susceptible or so vulnerable to predacious teachings. Now, what do I mean by predacious? What does predacious mean? It means marked or characterized by a predator, somebody who's out there trying to deceive, a wolf in sheep's clothing. See how the, the word picture all, always points to you know some type of a sinistrous creature that's trying to lead people astray. You know, you wouldn't fall for this stuff. And I'm, that's why I'm encouraging people to get into the Word every single day. I've heard it best, best said, and I quote, reading the Bible every day prevents truth decay. It's kind of like br brushing your teeth or an apple a day keeps the dentist away. You know, tooth decay? No, truth decay. Hey, tr the truth can be, de the truth can, you know, can decay if you allow it to. But that's why it's our job as Christians to not to not allow the truth. I mean, the truth is never it never changes because the truth is the truth. But the devil will get us convinced of something that's not true because that's what the devil does. Now you say I don't believe all this. Well, you better believe it. The devil is the father of all lies. He's the li he's a liar from the beginning, and he's going to tell you nonstop all, all the, a bunch of lies, and that's what he does. So let's just go into the Bible now and see what it says. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, verse one, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now keep in mind, this is not salvation. This is a, to a believer who's already saved. And, and he's we're being exhorted you know, to, to live like this. It's not salvation. Now there are people that are confused. I remember this one guy was trying to use these verses to condemn people. Well, you're not living a holy and acceptable life. You're not saved. That guy's a liar. This is written to believers. That's why he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. He's letting them know right up front, you're already a, you're, you're saved. You're a brethren. Okay. So look at the next verse. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, how do you do that? By reading the Bible, by taking in God's truth and, um, you know, continuing to read it. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, that's called the gap. Good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, let's turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, of course, whenever any of any any type of sanctification or any type of renewing takes place, it's the Holy Spirit doing it. It's the Holy Spirit doing it through us. But he, it's also we have a responsibility to allow this. That's why there's there's so many commands that telling us to do this. It's not a, it's not an automatic thing as some people would would say. It's automatic. Once you're saved, you're automatically going to walk after the spirit. No, it's not automatic because if it were automatic, why would he tell you to do it? It doesn't make any sense. So, and I want to I need to point that out, okay? Because there are a lot of Christians out there that are not renewing their minds, and it's just really quite sad. So it is, it is an exhortation. Look at uh, chapter 4, verse 23. And be ye, excuse me, no, take the ye out, and be renewed 
in the spirit of your mind. That means, you know, start learning this stuff all over again, afresh. Okay, be renewed. And this is very important to renew our, our minds. Now let's turn back to, let's we turn over to Colossians. There's one, another verse on this. Colossians chapter 3. Okay, once again he's telling us now, it's always, when he says being renewed, it's, it's always referring to some type of knowledge or some type of wisdom or reading the Bible. That's why I believe it's very important to read the Bible um, every single day, you know, heavily. Not just some little pithy, uh, ephemeral reading session. I'm talking about a, a long term, a long standing, you know, just start reading it and reading it and reading it. Spend a lot of time in the Word. Be grounded in the Word, okay? Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 and, okay, let's start back with verse 9, because it flows better. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Okay? And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Okay? The new man is renewed in knowledge. That's why it tells us to grow in grace. Spiritual growth is contingent upon Bible reading. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he's telling us, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. But now I want to point out, there's one more verse I want to look at. It tells us about this renewing process. It's something that takes place, you know, on a daily basis, and it, it comes step by step. So I'm going to look at a couple more verses on this, and then, I'm, then we'll close. So hang on one second. Okay, now the last verse I, want, I would like to look at is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the last verse, 18. Okay, and it reads, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Now this is a piecemeal type deal. This is not a, a one fell swoop, it happens at one moment, it's all over with. No, this is a this is a continual thing, a serial thing. You know, that's why it says we're changed into, into the same image from glory to glory. So it, it takes uh, it takes a lot of a lot of uh, Bible reading and a lot of um, uh, sanctification um, for this, 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 you know, this uh, renewing of the mind, this, this, this change. So I need to point that out. It's not something you just pick up the Bible for a few minutes, and you know, it's something you gotta, you know, do it several times a day. You know, get into the Word several times a day, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Bible makes it very clear: renewing your mind consists of uh, Bible reading, consists of getting into God's Word. So it's very important that we stay in the Word, and the Bible talks about in Isaiah. You know, when you first start out, when you first start start out in your spiritual growth, your spiritual walk, you know, it's it's basically just here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Word, you know. Let me just go ahead and find that verse. I don't want to just misquote the verse. I want to I want to you know go over the verse. Now, once you, once a person is mature in the faith and starting and starting to mature and getting into the the uh, meat as opposed to the milk. Now, and then it's it's a little it's a little bit different. But when you first start out, it's uh, Isaiah 28. It says in verse 9, "Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. Now keep in mind, precept is another word for word. Okay, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. So just a little bit of when you first start out it just takes a little bit of you know bible reading then as you grow it you get you you know you get a little more intense and then you'll get you'll start uh, getting into the meat so it starts off with milk and you kind of transition over into meat so that's all i have we need to just renew our minds and basically we do that by getting into the word it actually says in john uh, 15 that you are clean through the word or by the word let me just go ahead and close with that john 15 it's it's a way to be spiritually clean, you know. We you how do we clean ourselves physically? We use soap and water. How do we clean ourselves spiritually? God's word. Now it's, look at it. That's what it says. It says in verse three. Now, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It's a it's a it's a a pure word. That's why it's able to clean us. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to have your word, and I just pray that you allow us to see the importance of getting into your word and reading your word on a daily basis. That's how we renew our minds. Keep us safe, bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.